Hey all, John aka Whiskey and Sound, and I'm back with another episode of Baller Maker Mondays. So I am revisiting an old friend, which I was lucky enough to try on tap at the brewery back in March 2020 when I was there last. And that is, actually no, 2021. That's right. Um, Stone and Wood with the original Pacific Ale. This stuff is fantastic. It is a sessionable ale. It is just super tropical fruit stone fruit really lovely it's not smacking your face kind of hoppy it's just a gorgeous beer to drink um hot cold who cares you just drink it whenever it really is good stuff and so much so that it was actually recognized as um i think australia's best um craft beer in gab's 100 top australian crafts so yeah it was voted australia's best beer so Locally recognized, I'm pretty sure it's award winning. If it isn't, it should be because it is dynamite stuff. So, and readily accessible from Dan Murphy's or you know, BWS or wherever. Anyway, oh, so good. I'm so glad I got myself a four pack of this. Now, I had one direction that I was going to take with this, and I was going to make it a Byron Maker, a Byron Maker, a Byron Bay Baller Maker, and uh, you know, pair it back with the Highwayman. Uh, bourbon cast but I mean I could still do it if I wanted to um, I know that it's got that particular profile which lends it more into turning this boiler maker into more of a you know what we're gonna do it so let's make her a, a Byron Bay boiler maker now Highway Man's batch number eight which he come out with whilst he was doing his independent bottling run so the first 10 um, releases that he'd done were independent bottlings. Then he went on to do his single, uh, like his own single malt runs. Um, now, I need a fresh glass. There we go. So, oh, even better. I'm going to grab, rightfully so, a Highwayman glass. So, this was, if I'm not mistaken, it was two 50-litre barrels. Um... Not just any barrels, they were X Maker's Mark, which is a big thing for Dan Woolley because I know he's you know, deep, uh, like he's got a deep love for Lafroig. And if anyone knows Lafroig, their bourbon casks, um, their bourbon cask choice is Maker's Mark. So he's gotten his hands on 250 litres. Uh, now that would have been recouped to be, you know, to become 50 litre casks. Married those together, so then he got a yield of 130. 30 bottles and uh, bottled at 55.5%. Now, that also uh, uh, come from Adam's Distillery, uh, that particular spirit, and that resonates really well with Dan Woolley, I know that much, because so much so that he actually took, or he bought the steel, I should say, he didn't take it, <laughs> he purchased the steel and the mash tub uh, from uh, Adam's Distillery. So that is in this glass now. And it is a very earthy, almost, I will say almost medicinal. But yeah, this, yeah, it's very meaty, very meaty and very savory like uh, bourbon style or bourbon cask whiskey. So stone and wood also comes in at 4.4%. I believe this direction it's, it's going to lead it towards a cut direction. Could lead towards contrast. I don't see it being complimentary. What I would do, if I'm going to be going complement with this particular beer, is maybe something along the lines of a 17.92. That would be perfect. Uh, just any bourbon whiskey would be fantastic. But I thought, you know what? Let's do a bourbon cask whiskey. And let's keep it Byron. So, why not? All right. Let's do a... Let's do a whiskey wash and then a beer rinse. See what happens because I really want to get weird, uh, like reacquainted on the um, on the palate with this one because it's been a while since I revisited this. Like I have put a good sized dent in it too, and surprisingly, I've still got some of this left because I know this bottle is long gone anywhere else. So, right. Um, so on this one here. You know what the guys on the old barrel house called it? It is like a like they I think they got sawdust pencil shavings this smells like a timber yard 
it's, it's got so much oak influence on this one. It's just, yeah, wood driven, not, it's not overly tannicky where it's unpleasant. Like you get some that are just a hot mess. This isn't that. Um, there's just a pleasant amount of, of oak presence. So much so that you're either, um, you know, um, uh, ranging around through your uh, pencil case. <laughs> but it's got like this lovely vanilla, um, vanilla custard note to it. Also, it's got some citrus, uh, yeah, some real like bitter citrus to it, almost like a canola note. Um, and some lovely spices as well. But a menthol comes through, so yeah, gorgeous stuff. I really like it. Oh, okay, so let's go whiskey wash, beer rinse, and let's see what we end up with. I'm going to say that this is a big whiskey at 55.5%, so we're probably going to end up with this running a cut on this particular whiskey and bringing out whatever flavors. So that's going to be my prediction anyway. Mm. Oh yeah, spice driven. Um, oh yeah, that's that's quite savory at first, but then it goes into oh, do I detect vanilla custard? It's got like a pastry note to it. Oh man, syrupy almost. Um, yeah, really lovely. Oh, some cloves, cinnamon. Lovely spices coming through. Chocolate notes. Mmm. So good, that finish just keeps going. Right, alright. Let's get back to Baller Maker. So, now that I've got this on, like, a fair bit on the palette, we'll do a proper wash and then uh, beer rinse. And this will be short and quick on the beer because the beer is only, you know, it's, it's mid-strength. So, um, it will be it will be quick. So there's going to be that little split second we're going to get where I'll get the achievement of the uh, ball maker. Oh, okay. It did cut, but not in the direction that I. Thought that I was going to go in. Ooh. That actually works. Yeah, that works. Oh, it turned into a vanilla bomb. It actually took all the spices out. And made it into a super bloody vanilla bomb. That was... Quite a surprise. That was really good. Um, oh yeah, that's so custody now. Man. So good. Shit. Oh, I actually wasn't expecting that. Oh, I thought... It was gonna cut the vanilla out, and it was almost gonna bring like the like the more savory notes forward. But no, it gave me quite a surprise. Cut the savory notes out, and just brought out the sweetness. Fantastic. Um, lingering butter menthol note though, so that's yeah, I, and that's that's cool. I like that. So let's do beer wash, whiskey rinse, and see what we get on that one. That is where I think the contrast is gonna come into play. But we'll see. I need another hit of that. Hmm. Oh, very drying. You know what? This ball maker actually really works. Um, I'm gonna say it goes down to. It's a real fine line between contrast and complement. So, but this works really well. Um, actually, so much so, it's, yeah, it just surprised me. So, yeah, that is, that's a cool little boil maker. It's a challenging one, but it's an enjoyable one. Like, it makes you stop and think and go, what direction are you going in? Yeah, you're kind of fun. I'll stick around and watch the show. That's the kind of ball maker that this is. This has been fun. And you know what? Very consistent with the 
experiences that you'll end up with at Byron Bay in this day and age. <laughs> anyway, uh, look, thank you very much for joining me on this particular episode. We've just capped over the 10 minute mark, so I'm going to cut it here. And um, I shall see you again on the next episode. Stay tuned.